There's no delegations on today's agenda, so we don't need to do that part. Um, but there are some items for consideration. Um, the first item is uh, the SPAC mandate and green team subcommittee update. Uh, who's doing that, Rebecca? Yeah. All right. So the purpose of this report was just to provide the committee with SPAC's updated mandate as it's written in chapter 26 of the municipal code and also to provide an update on the green team subcommittee. So SPAC's mandate is to advise council on and assist staff with matters that relate to the items contained within the corporate and the community climate change action plan, administer the green ER awards, and to promote and undertake educational and outreach programs that relate to environment and sustainability. The official mandate has also been attached to the report of the appendix for reference. And then in terms of the Green Team Subcommittee, it's an official subcommittee of SPAC, and it was originally created as part of Frankfurt Canada Day Waste Diversion Initiative. The subcommittee helps city staff and Canada Day event organizers with waste diversion and sorting during the events. But due to the pandemic and event gathering restrictions, Canada Day events were canceled and the subcommittee wasn't able to meet during that time. Uh, but now that things are returning to normal, the Green Team Subcommittee was reinstated last July. Uh, however, some of the key team members of the Green Team are no longer members of SPAC, and subcommittees might only include members uh, from that advisory committee. As well, with Canada Day fast approaching, and SPAC now meeting every other month, or potentially not meeting for them during these meetings, uh, this could slow down the process of the subcommittee since they are required to report directly to SPAC. So to ensure that the subcommittee is able to run smoothly, uh, it's recommended that the green team be dissolved as an official subcommittee of SPAC and instead have the ability to work through the dissolution. Uh, this would allow the green team the flexibility to work with community recreation and events departments and to complete their important work more efficiently. Uh, but SPAC members are still encouraged to support the green team through active volunteer participation if they're interested. Uh, we also have here uh, Jen Middleton, who is the special event supervisor. And if there's any questions about the green team, we'd be happy to take those now. Um, are there any uh, questions of staff uh, regarding that report? Just going to go to Andy. Uh, through you to uh, whoever can give me um, uh, some some clarity on on the green team um, is the green team. I understand the, the situation the green team is in, and I understand um, some of the members are no longer part of the green team. Um, as an environmental leader in the community, and I, if if this is a conflict of interest, then let me know, and I'll have to we'll have to remedy that by me either stepping aside or whatever it is, so we, I can ask the question. But is the green team allowed to be privately funded by business rather than the city if there are this type of um, limitations, let's call it in, in this case, because I find the green team does fantastic work. And if it is supposed to do it with the membership that it needs to have in order to lead it, then I as a business leader and, and others out there would consider funding it out of, out of the city for, um, uh, control. However, if there's a way to bring back members through this suggestion that you did through special events, then my point is moot. So I just wanted to make sure before I brought it up in new business, it seems it's perfect to bring it up here. Is that something that's allowed? I'll leave that for staff and, and the chair to respond. I can take the first stab at that, Jen, and then maybe you can jump in as you're more familiar with the green team. Um, through the chair to you, Andy. I'm not too sure about the, the funding mechanism. Um, as there is a budget, which is our second report to the committee today, that's uh, specifically for SPAC, regardless of whether or not SPAC, the green team is a part of SPAC, I think if it's the decision of SPAC to fund activities of the green team, that would still be okay. That's the decision that SPAC would have to make itself. So I don't know that the issue is the, the funding piece for a private business. It's more so that the membership right now as it stands has to consist of SPAC members. 
And that's a limitation right now because if there's any change in membership on SPAC, that affects the Green Team's ability to participate and function and organize the entire volunteer event. So it's two separate things, Andy, if that makes sense. This report doesn't deal with any of the funding piece. It's more so just bringing the Green Team outside of SPAC and moving it to be a special events advisory team that does other events throughout the community to make it more of an efficient process. And the budget is a, a different item. I hope that answers your question. Um, and Dean, do you have a follow up? Yeah, follow up. So, okay, thank you. The budget is not the issue. So then the question under this new um, arrangement, under the special, um, sorry, please pardon me through the chair to anyone. I don't mean any offense. I just, I've been having a long day and I can't even remember if half the things I'm supposed to remember. Um, through the special events committee, um, would they be able to bring on citizenry, either recommended by SPAC or by uh, the community itself, to make the green team whole so the green team has continuity and uh, people who are interested to be part of it outside of SPAC? So, in the case, in this case, would the special events committee be able to put out a call for public volunteers to be special consultants or advisors to this green team that they would administer? Through the chair to you, Andy, yes, absolutely. That would be what the, the green team would do. SPAC is still, and the members of SPAC are still encouraged to be active participants on the committee because it started as a, an SPAC subcommittee. So definitely that environmental perspective is still appreciated on the committee. But having it under special events just allows more continuity in case the, uh, the green team isn't able to meet and in case SPAC isn't able to meet. This will just ensure that the green team is still able to perform its functions um, separate and they'll still have the ability to to coordinate and and have those volunteers if they want to do so. Yeah, I, I have a question, I guess. So, um, you know, with with this, then you said there's a special events team, but that's not a committee, right? Like that's yes, a separate. It is a committee. So it's called the Special Events Advisory Team. It's comprised of only three departments. So, parks, traffic, legal, and the Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, if it is a subcommittee, then it, it's operating differently than a subcommittee for our group, right? So it has to be comprised of members of, uh, you know, in this case, it would be members of SPAC, but um, so with this, the transition to something else uh, for oversight, um, the composition is changing or for a green team or? They would be directly reporting <clears throat> to the special events advisory team. So okay. they would be like a subcommittee of that. I'm just failing to see the difference between what it is currently as a subcommittee of SPAC versus turning into a subcommittee of special events. So just I'm trying to understand that. Sorry. Because special, I, do you have a clarification? Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so the special events team is actually like a staff led committee. It's not an official committee under the schedule. So it doesn't follow the procedural bylaw or anything. So it's um, the green team would be um, like a staff led committee, but it wouldn't be an official subcommittee of the special events team. Okay. I'm just trying to see how like the difference between the two. Uh, not being done by just one. Giving them a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And it's taking out the middle layer right now. The green team has to report to has packed before anything can get done, and that can delay the process or right. the timelines or whatever. Again, in the case for Canada Day, something as big an event that requires this much coordination, um, it does does really slow down that process. It just takes that second layer out, so the green team is able to operate and get its, its work done, report through special events, and yeah. um, that layer and time. Is yeah, I, I mean, I think the 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 intention was to keep the green team going in its current form, whatever that form was. But um, I guess with the the um, members no longer part of it, 
then it wasn't able to serve the same function it used to do. So um, I think that was sort of the clarification we we're looking for on that. So yeah. Greg has a question. Uh, Greg. Um, thank you. Uh, so two questions. One, um, does the green team need budget and where would that where would that monies come from? And then second would be um, I assume that their mandate remains the same, the mandate and their priorities might have been set by this team under the, the past setup. If so, now what, who's leading them and what's the feedback, uh, the feedback to this committee on you know, what's happening, objectives, goals, et cetera. So I can try to answer, um, and Jen, if you want to step in, yeah. the, the mandate is pretty much the same as what SPAC had set out. It, I don't know the exact mandate, but, I know, but um, it is to promote waste diversion at events like Canada Day. So the intent is for staff to work with the special events advisory team to get those volunteers rather than having a token SPAC. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's just staff is going to be the, the middle point to ensure that we're able to get those volunteers and coordinate those efforts um, rather than members of SPAC being that. So uh, it's still going to function in the exact same way. It's just the, the people who are organizing it are going to be staff now, and they're going to be uh, ensuring that continuity. In terms of the budget, um, Greg, I, I have not yet heard since the last time the Green Team met. I haven't heard any asks and requests of budgets through SPAC. We're actually talking about that as our next item of how we're going to be using our budget. So. Uh, we may be able to touch on that a little bit more in the next meeting, but um, I have not heard anything. Jen, I don't know if you know what the budget typically is for green teams. It's been a, a few years since the green team has operated. So um, if the committee would like, once we get to that budget item, which is next up, we can report back if there's an ask from the green team to support the new standards in the next year. Thank you. Taylor? Am I allowed to answer that question as a current active green team member? Please. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am active on green team and I can answer some of these questions. I think the biggest issue right now is that the, well, the previous chair of the green team is no longer on SPAC, which means that we're not following proper procedure. I personally don't have any interest in being chair, so being able to separate it from SPAC allows us to continue to operate. Uh, we can't operate without a chair. Um, in terms of mandate, the mandate is still the same. It has not changed since the green team was assembled in 2017, 2018. Uh, we actually just did a festival um, a couple days ago, which was a lot of fun. We had a lot of volunteers there. Uh, so the mandate is really just to do waste diversion at events um, and do education you know, through those events uh, with a, a large team of volunteers. As for budget, we don't require a budget. We currently have all of the resources and tools that we need to operate. So it's really just being able to release Green Team from SPAC um, so we can continue to operate because um, SPAC not meeting quorum lately has caused a lot of slowdown, which is, is the issue we would like to be able to continue to operate with the members that we have. So I hope that I can provide some clarity there. Thank you very much. Yeah, I I don't see any other comments. Um, so um, uh, with that, um, can I please have a mover and seconder to place the item on the floor? We've got uh, Councillor Sullivan, Councillor Martin. Uh, so that's that the uh, SPAC mandate and green team subcommittee update be received and that the green team subcommittee of SPAC be disbanded. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, um, we can call a vote. Um, all in favor? And seeing none opposed, carried. Thank you. So with that, we'll move on to the next item. Um, the review of the annual SPAC budget. Um, Rebecca again. Yeah, thank you. So at the last SPAC meeting, uh, questions were brought up about SPAC's budget. So we just wanted to provide a bit of a review of that budget. So SPAC first received a $5,000 budget in 2020 to carry out various committee initiatives, such as advertising and promoting environmental and climate initiatives. 
initiatives. Since then, SSAC has received a $5,000 budget as part of the Public Works Operating Budget. Uh, with the approval of this budget, staff have no authority to transfer any unused funds to a reserve, so they can't be carried over to the next year. SSAC also cannot use their budget to donate funds. Uh, in the past, uh, SSAC has discussed using the budget for a waste diversion at Canada Day events. Uh, advertising and promoting the Community uh, Climate Change Action Plan, a Climate Change Action Plan Awareness video, and marketing the Green ER Awards. Uh, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the committee has only used their budget in 2021, and that was for the Climate Action Plan Awareness video. Um, and if there's any questions or comments about the budget, I'd be happy to take them. Okay. Um, any, uh questions of staff regarding that report. Um, so that current budget is unused for this year, the 5,000. Okay. Um, so I, we can... Uh, I'm not seeing anything else. So, um, can we uh, have a mover and consider to place the item on the floor that the report uh, uh, is uh, titled Review of Annual SPAC Budgets Received? Councillors, thank you. Um, any discussion on, on this in general? I guess this may be an opportunity to discuss what we would like to use the uh, the funds for this year. Um, as as they said, a lot of it's been for promotion of uh, of climate change initiatives, and given the mandate has changed to that lately, um, it would be good to uh, possibly deal with with some um, initiatives that are ongoing right now. Um, so. Um, do we have an idea of some upcoming work that um, that uh, is coming out of that plan um, scheduled for this year um, that uh, that comes to mind right now? I, I, I have a I have a suggestion related to the green bin rollout, um, but if you have any other ones, um, it would just be good to sort of let the committee know some of the upcoming items that could use some promotion. Yeah. So um, through the Chair, I can start and maybe Rebecca can add on to it. But uh, we had a report last last time. There was an SPAC meeting that listed our various projects. Rebecca, if you can pull up that list from the previous report where we had some items in the community climate change action plan. That would be something else. Green team is the one I can think of. Staff um, have a budget allocated to that for the city to do promotion uh, before the green bin is rolled out. But if SPAC would like to do its own promotion of the green bin and try and do some outreach. That would be welcome, of course. Um, a couple of our other ongoing projects are the um, promotion of planting more trees. We're doing a lot of tree planting initiatives this year. We just passed a bylaw to protect um, trees on city property. So that could be one potentially. Another one could be we have a lot of um, energy audits ongoing where that's from the corporate plan to reduce our footprint from our buildings. Um, some other things are we're doing a study on reducing uh, energy consumption and going net zero with our facilities, so Gretzky, um, Civic Center, and Lions. Uh, those are some of the, the corporate side of things. And then on the community side, we passed our Community Climate Change Action Plan, which um, brought forward information about planting more trees for residents and um, doing energy saving initiatives within your own home, reducing your footprint in your home. Um, those are some that I can think of off the top of my head if any of those are of interest. And um, another one that just popped up is uh, active transportation. We have an active transportation master plan coming out um, at the city shortly that's going to be coming for council and um, promoting bike use, trail use, uh, walking. Um, that could be another initiative or uh, promoting use of transit as an option to reduce greenhouse gases from, from vehicles. Uh, those are the main ones I can think of. If there's any yeah, I, I, think, I think that's a good list and it sort of jogs some of the ideas that are uh, 
you know, um, that are possibilities for that. Um, does it, do any of those um, programs seem to resonate with any of the other uh, committee members? Oh, yes, Councillor Sultan. Um, for you, obviously, this is a new turf that Brantford's going to go down with this organics program. And I wish I had the accounts prior to this because I would have made sure it wasn't starting when it started. You guys are walking into the lion's den with this program, unfortunately, because you're starting right before the freezing temperatures in the organics program. Um, if it hadn't been me, I would have started it sooner. So it would have had a little bit of experience under the belt before the cold weather months showed up. So I think it's imperative that we actually get the education out to them and have a little more initiatives on this program. Otherwise, you're going to end up seeing broken uh, organics bins. The stuff's going to be frozen in them. And they're going to fall off the trucks. They're going to fall into the trucks. They're going to smash. They're going to crack. If people don't load them properly and keep them stored properly while they're waiting for collection. I just watched well, London's in the process of doing this. They're doing trial zones and they're already running into problems that they, they didn't think outside the box and actually talk to the vendor. So I think we need to make sure that we can explore. This is why I'm trying to be very careful here because I know I'm stepping on a fine line. But I think it's very imperative you talk to the vendor and get a lot of information from them and make sure we get that out to the residents sooner rather than later so that they're fully aware and fully educated on how this program is supposed to work. So that we're not having ex, um, extra losses and calls into the complaint center and everything else as a result of us not getting the proper education. And I'm, I'm not saying like hydro bills and water bills, we need to actually get material out stuffed in their mailbox. Whatever we have to do is half the people when they get their hydro bill, they throw it in the garbage because they're getting it online. They got to be saved. So we need to make sure we're doing this accurately. And not long winded because, like, I just did because you're gonna lose it. <laughs> so, so, so <clears throat> through the chair, if I, if I can add, yeah. um, I, we are going to be doing a lot of this promotion already through our own budget. We, we have an approved budget just for media, knowing obviously it's a huge change. Um, so, if SPAC is very interested in the green bin, I would suggest maybe just chatting with staff or our environmental services staff can come and, and present what our media campaign is going to be. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure they're both in line with one another, we're not duplicating efforts. That would be my suggestion if the mm -hmm. idea is to use the funding on that. Um, and then if they're if the committee would like to focus on the community member side of just the importance of green bin or maybe tackling one of those items, that would be just my suggestion rather than duplicating what we're already doing. But um, I I think the plan was already for our environmental services staff to come to a future SPAC meeting. I think we're looking at June for that. So we can definitely coordinate them coming and doing a presentation on what our plan is. And then um, if at that point, the committee would like to advise how to use the, the remaining $5,000 budget, that would be fine. We can move forward. Now, do we have a set date of when we're going to start educating? I don't know the exact date, but I do know it's going to be in the summer months is when we can start doing this. Would you like to every month throw another one at them? Just with the constant. Like it's all about repetition. <laughs> um, I know when Hamilton went to their organics program, it was a disaster. So maybe that's something we do. We reach out to Hamilton and find out what they did wrong. See if there's somebody they're willing to talk about. It. Make sure we don't mimic the same mistake. We're at Canada Day and they're also at Scare the Square. So they're getting they're heading for that's a good. Sort of a trial day. run. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and, and I don't think the intention is to duplicate efforts. It's not that. It's more to um, um, maybe there's an area of focus that we can dive into, like um, you know the sorting aspect of it, like a small a small subset of it, um, or or it goes to some messaging related to it, not the actual promotion itself. So it, I think it would be good to to talk to somebody um, about what the marketing campaign would look like, and if there's an opportunity to uh, to to help with that. Um, I, there's another uh, comment, uh, Lee. Uh, hello, yes. Um, so I I do consulting with uh, the organics uh, company up in the city of Guelph, and uh, to to kind of reinforce that point, you know, if you're going to do education to the community, um, really it should be focused on 
um, how to properly load, what you need to put in it, what doesn't go in it. Um, not so much on the importance of the program. I think everyone already kind of recognizes um, how important it is, but it's really um, the, the issues that they go through at the facility with, with shredding and sorting and then, you know, additional refuse that they have to deal with um, to really streamline their operations and get the best quality out. Um, it, it's really teaching the community members what needs to go in it. I, uh, that's, that's their biggest struggle. Um, so for, for what that's worth. Yeah, that's a good point. Taylor. Uh, Taylor, do you have another suggestion? Does... I think this might be redundant, but does ESBAC have any ability to do community outreach or community engagement? I understand that we are a city committee and it's very formal, um, but do we have any way to go to events or again, after consulting with um, the proper groups, but do we have any way to actually go to events and, and actually speak to community members and show them what this process is going to look like? Because, I mean, it's one thing to be sending out print material and, you know, targeting people through social media campaigns, but it's also another to see them in person and actually walk them through um, the process itself. I know there's been a lot of negative feedback online about this program. So I'm just curious if that's something that's within ESPAC's ability. Um, so through the chair, uh, some members are, of, are if, the, if the committee wishes, you are able to pass, pass a recommendation um, to send some members to events. Um, you just have to make sure that you don't have quorum at that event because then it would be considered a formal meeting. And Jennifer, did you have something to add? I just wanted to, I don't know if you heard me, that there are going to be at Canada Day and Spare the Square, uh, right on site marketplace and uh, a part of the first year. And, and if there are other events, I just want to add the, the recreation and, and events folks, they have an events calendar. Mm -hmm. So if, Rip, Rip, Rip. yeah, we have an events calendar for the special events. I just something as PAC as a committee wanted to look into, mm -hmm. um, and it's on to go to those events. I think that, that could be something that we can reach as well, Taylor, if that, if that works. Uh, Andy, did you have a question? Uh, uh, quite, uh, more uh, through you, the chair, if you, um, whoever can help amplify my point here. Um, I've been noticing that we have the opportunity um, here to work with other city committees and maybe even with staffing. Is there any way that we can coordinate um, some sort of public facing through, let's say, the fall fairs or the spring fairs, right? Like there, wherever there's a Brantford city booth, wherever you're, you're pitching volunteerism or you're pitching, you know, economic development or whatever it is, is there any way that we can have environmental um, aspects then there? But knowing that there's a home show, I think this weekend, we should have had a booth, at least as a city, because people buy household stuff. There might be, it might be germane for the city to have some sort of presence of these things to say, you know, when you buy, this you know you know don't throw it out here or you know whatever it may be so i'm wondering can we piggyback on other public facing city showcases where environment uh, or spac can have some sort of edge of the table you know either in literature or signage where they can at least spread the message um just a clarification so you're saying um to allocate some budget to um attendance at like booths or um, other events, and then that would be a, a way to promote the um, the uh, climate action plan. Is that well? Here? Sure. Um, yeah, if you want to go that way, but I, I'm saying you know we're all one happy city government. Why don't we just say, hey, um, you know we're we only have a small budget. Can you think of us when you're doing like a fall fair or a spring fair or something, and you know you're setting up a booth? Could we come there? You know, as a guest and you know, represent one aspect of the city thing so we don't have to spend the money, right? And at least we get some um, some oomph out of it because, you know, it's a big city booth or a tent or whatever it may be. So that's cool. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, we can take, I'm sure you can take that away. Is there any other... Uh... Any, any other, I, I guess, uh, bring it back to the overall discussion about, um, you know, ideas for um, for use of that that budget. Um, 
the uh, Green Bin communications is just one one idea, um, and the you know some of those booths or promotional materials could be another idea. Um, if there's any other ones um, before we close this item off. Yeah, I think um, I think after we hear from the the staff on uh, on some of the promotion uh, promotional materials and and that coming up, that might help uh, identify some other avenues where we could possibly support. So that would, yeah. be, that would be good. Yeah, we don't have to decide on the spot today, but it's good to good to think about that that budget amount. So thanks for. Thanks. It could be through an amendment okay. mm -hmm. on your next report. So uh, we can just move an amendment to allocate some funds to whatever we decide. Make it public. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So there's a mechanism for us to help allocate that those funds when we do decide on that. Um, so uh, I guess we've already moved the uh, moved the the, the discussion. So um, we'll call the vote now. Um, all those in favor of receiving that report, budget. Unanimous. Right. Seeing none, uh, that's carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, so moving on to the minutes um, from the last meeting, which is uh, March 30th, 2023. Um, I believe we can just move right into it. So may I have a mover to adopt the minutes? Councilor Sullivan. Taylor. Yeah. Um, any, uh, then that is that the minutes be approved. Um, any discussion? Errors or admissions? All those in favor? Thank you. Seeing none, uh, that's carried as well. Uh, there are no resolutions uh, remaining for the meeting. Um, and no resolutions or notices of motion. Um, and with that, um, seeing no other information, uh, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you.